Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Right here in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. I'm here with my trusty and loyal and competent assistant, um, Abhaya Das Brahmachari. Uh, and we're trying to keep our eye on the road the wrath, the path back to the spiritual world by um, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam every day with devotees who are like-minded, who like to hear, who have a taste for hearing. It's the most important item, that and chanting Hare Krishna Ma Mantra on our beads, especially, but in kirtan, in public also. Um, these are the most potent forms of devotional service. Uh, Rupa Goswami has described that the hearing of the Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees, chanting the holy names of the Lord, are three of the five most potent uh, forms of devotional service. They are so potent that even if you don't know anything about how it works or what you're doing, it acts. What to speak if you, if you do know uh, what you're doing and, and what it means. It is um, unlimitedly um, effective in taking us um, forward in our spiritual lives, solving all our problems, um, making our hearts happy. This was Prabhupada's mission. He often said, he just wanted everyone to be happy. That was his goal. Okay, so here we are. Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatan Goswami. Um, glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam, which, uh, when Krishna left, uh, became the shelter of the devotees. Literary incarnation of Krishna. Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drikprada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the world. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwandoditaditya, Sri Krishna Paribhartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate. Sarvadasa Vasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Man Mahadana Manisadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute my only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my, good, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chuchatakada hanamun chagadachin mam premna rit kantayokspura O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Slowly but surely, 
working through the Bhagavatam cover to cover. And we've come to the point where there's a, a pause in the descriptions of the creation, which will be soon taken up again by Kapila Dev, the incarnation of Krishna, who explains uh, Sankhya philosophy from a devotional point of view. But before that, we're, it, we're, we're getting a little uh, nectar, uh, vidura, after leaving the palace we heard about before, is going to all the places of pilgrimage. And he's finally come to Mathura and he's met Uddhava. And that's where we'll start. Uh, it's chapter 1. Um, chap chapter 1, third canto, beginning with text 35. Then, due to his great love and feeling, Vidura embraced him, Uddhava, who was a constant companion of Lord Krishna and formerly a great student of Brihaspati's. Vidura then asked him for news of the family of Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Purport. Vidura was, an, was older than Uddhava, like a father, and therefore when, they, when the two met, <clears throat> Uddhava bowed down before Vidura, and Vidura embraced him because Uddhava was younger, like a son. Vidura's brother, Pandu, was Lord Krishna's uncle, and Uddhava was a cousin to Lord Krishna. According to social custom, therefore, Vidura was to be respected by Uddhava on the level of his father. Uddhava was a great scholar in logic, <clears throat> and he was known to be a son or disciple of Brihaspati, the greatly learned priest and spiritual master of the demigods. Vidura asked Uddhava about the welfare of his relatives, although he already knew that they were no longer in the world. This inquiry appears to be very queer, but Srila Jiva Goswami states that the news was shocking to Vidura, who therefore inquired again due to great curiosity. Thus his inquiry was psychological and not practical. Text 26 Please tell me whether the original personalities of Godhead who incarnated themselves at the request of Brahma who was born out of the lotus flower from the Lord and who have increased the prosperity of the world by elevating everyone are doing well in the house of Srirasena Report. Lord Krishna and Balarama are not two different personalities of Godhead. God is one without a second, but He expands Himself in many forms without their being separate from one another. They are all plenary expansions. The immediate expansion of Lord Krishna is Baladeva and Brahma born from the lotus flower from Garbhada Kashai Vishnu is an expansion of Baladeva. This indicates that Krishna and Baladeva are not subject to the regulations of the universe. On the contrary, the whole universe is under their subjugation. They appeared at the request of Brahma to liberate the burden of the world and they relieved the world by many superhuman activities so that everyone became happy and prosperous. Without the grace of the Lord, no one can become happy and prosperous. Because the happiness of the family of the Lord's devotees depends on the happiness of the Lord, Vidura first of all inquired about the well-being of the Lord. Text 27 Please tell me whether the best friend of the Kurus, our brother-in-law, Vasudev, is doing well. He is very 
munificent. He is very munificent. He is like a father to his sisters and he is always pleasing to his wives. Purport. <clears throat> Lord Krishna's father, Vasudev, had sixteen wives and, each, and, and one of them named Puravi or Rohini, the mother of Baladev, was the sister of Vidura. Vasudev therefore was the husband of Vidura's sister and thus they were brothers-in-law. Vasudev's sister Kunti was the wife of Pandu, Vidura's elder brother. And in that sense also, Vasudev was brother-in-law to Vidura. Kunti was younger than Vasudev and it was the duty of the elder brother to treat younger sisters as daughters. Whenever anything was needed by Kunti, it was munificently delivered by Vasudev due to, due to his great love for his younger sister. Vasudev never satisfied his wives and at the same time he supplied the objects desired by his... Excuse me, I misread. Vasudev never dissatisfied his wives and at the same time he supplied the objects desired by his sister. He had special attention for Kunti because she became a widow at an early age. While inquiring about Vasudev's welfare, Vidura remembered all about him and the family relationship. Text 28 O Uddhava, how is Prajumna, the commander-in-chief of the Yadus, who was Cupid in a former life. Rukmini bore him as her son from Lord Krishna by the grace of Brahmanas, whom he pleased. Purport. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, Smara, Cupid or Kamadev, is one of the eternal associates of Lord Krishna. Jiva Goswami has explained this very elaborately in his treatise, Krishna Sandarbha. Text 29 O my friend, tell me, whether Ugrasena, the king of the Satpatas, Vrishnis, Bhojas and Dasharas, is now doing well? He went far away from his kingdom, leaving aside all hopes of his royal throne, but Lord Krishna again installed him. Text 30 O oh, gentle one, does Samba fare well? He exactly resembles his father, the personality of Godhead. In a previous birth, he was born as Kartikeya in the womb of the wife of Lord Shiva. Now, he has been born in the womb of Jambavinti, the most enriched wife of Krishna. Purport Lord Shiva, one of the three qualitative incarnations of the Personality of Godhead, is a plenary expansion of the Lord. Kartikeya, born of Him, is on the level of Prajumna, another son of Lord Krishna. When Lord Sri Krishna descends into the material world, all His plenary portions also appear with Him to exhibit different functions of the Lord. Except for the pastimes at Vrindavan, all functions are performed by the Lord's different plenary expansions. Vasudev is the plenary expansion of Narayana. When the Lord appeared as Vasudev before Devaki and Vasudev, He appeared in His capacity as Narayana. Similarly, all the demigods of the heavenly kingdom appeared as associates of the Lord in the forms of Prajumna, Samba, Uddhava, and so on. It is learned here that Kamadev appeared as Prajumna, Kartikeya as Samba, and one of the Vasus as Uddhava. All of them served in their different capacities in order to enrich the pastimes of Krishna. Text 31 O Uddhava, does Yuyudan, 
farewell? He learned the intricacies of military art from Arjuna and attained the transcendental destination, which is very difficult to reach, even for great renouncers. Purport The destination of transcendence is to become the personal associate of the Personality of Godhead, who is known as Adhokshaja, <clears throat> he who is beyond the reach of the senses. The renouncers of the world, the sannyasis, give up all worldly connections, namely family, wife, children, friends, home, wealth, everything, to attain the transcendental bliss of Brahman happiness. But Adhokshaja happiness is beyond Brahman happiness. The empiric philosophers enjoy a transcendental quality of bliss by philosophical speculation on the supreme truth. But beyond that pleasure is the pleasure enjoyed by Brahman in his eternal form of the personality of Godhead. Brahman bliss is enjoyed by living entities after liberation from material bondage. But Parabrahman the Personality of Godhead, enjoys eternally a bliss of his own potency, which is called the Ladini Potency. The empiric philosopher who studies Brahman by negation of the external features has not yet learned the quality of the Ladini Potency of Brahman. Out of many potencies of the Omnipotent, there are three features of his internal potency namely Sangbit, Sandini, and Ladini. And in spite of their strict adherence to the principles of Yama, Niyama, Asana, Dhyana, Dharana, and Pranayama, the great yogis and jnanis are unable to enter into the internal potency of the Lord. This internal potency is, however, easily realized by the devotees of the Lord, by dint of devotional service. Yuryudan <clears throat> achieved this stage of life just as he achieved expert knowledge in mil military science from Arjuna. Thus his life was successful to the fullest extent from both the spiritual, the material and spiritual angles of vision. That is the way of devotional service to the Lord. Text 32. Please tell me whether Akrura, the son of Shapalka, is doing well. He is a faultless soul surrendered unto the personality of Godhead. He once lost his mental equilibrium due to his ecstasy of transcendental love and fell down on the dust of a road which was marked with the footprints of Lord Krishna. Purport When Akrura went to Vrindavan in search of Krishna, he saw the footprints of the Lord on the dust of Nandagram and at once fell on them in the ecstasy of transcendental love. This ecstasy is possible for a devotee who is fully absorbed in incessant thoughts of Krishna. Such a pure devotee of the Lord is naturally faultless because he is always associated with the supremely pure personality of Godhead. Constant thought of the Lord is the antiseptic method for keeping oneself free from the infectious contamination of the material qualities. The pure devotee of the Lord is always in the company of the Lord by thinking of Him. Yet, in the particular context of time and place, the transcendental emotions take a different turn and this breaks the mental equilibrium of the, of the devotee. Lord Chaitanya displayed the typical example of transcendental ecstasy as we can understand from the life of this incarnation of God. Text 33 
as the Vedas are the reservoir of sacrificial purposes. So the daughter of King Devaka Bhoja <coughs> conceived the Supreme Personality of Godhead in her womb, as did the mother of the demigods. Is she, Devaki, doing well? Purport. The Vedas are full of transcendental knowledge and spiritual values. And thus Devaki, the mother of Lord Krishna, conceived the Lord in her womb as the personified meaning of the Vedas. There is no difference between the Vedas and the Lord. The Vedas aim at the understanding of the Lord and the Lord is the Vedas personified. Devaki is compared to the meaningful Vedas and the Lord to their purpose personified. Text 34 May I inquire whether Aniruddha is doing well? He is the fulfiller of all the desires of the pure devotees and has been considered from your to be the cause of the Rig Veda, the creator of the mind, and the fourth plenary expansion of Vishnu. Purport The Adi Chatur Vyuha, the original expansions from Baladev, are Vasudeva, Sankrishana, Prajumna, Sankarsana, Prajumna, and Aniruddha. All of them are Vishnu Tattvas or non-different personalities of Godhead. In the incarnation of Sri Rama, all these different expansions appeared for particular pastimes. Lord Rama is the original Vasudeva, and his brothers were Sankarsana, Prajumna, and Aniruddha. Aniruddha is also the cause of Mahavishnu, from whose breathing the Rig Veda appeared. All this is nicely explained in the Markandeya Purana. In the incarnation of Lord Krishna, Aniruddha appeared as the grandson of the Lord. Lord Krishna in Dwarka is the Vasudeva expansion of the original group. The, the original Lord Krishna never leaves Goloka Vrindavan. All the plenary expansions are one and the same, Vishnu Tattva, and there is no difference in their potency. Text 35 O sober one, others such as Ridika, Charodeshna, Gada, and the son of Satyabhama, who accept Lord Sri Krishna as the soul of the self and thus follow his path without de deviation, are they well? 36 also, let me inquire whether Maharaj Yudhishthir is now maintaining the kingdom according to religious principles and with respect for the path of religion. Formerly, Duryodhana, Duryodhana was burning with envy because Yudhishthir was being protected by Krishna and Arjuna as if they were his own arms. Purport Maharaj Yudhishthir was the emblem of religion. When he was ruling his kingdom with the help of Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the opulence of his kingdom surpassed all imaginations of the opulence of the kingdom of heaven. His actual arms were Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Sorry about that. We got a phone call and I didn't recognize the number, so it must be something different. Okay. Maharaj Yudhishthir was the emblem of religion. When he was ruling his kingdom with the help of Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the opulence of his kingdom surpassed all imaginations of the opulence of the kingdom of heaven. His actual arms were Lord Krishna and Arjuna, and thus he surpassed everyone's opulence. Duryodhana, being envious of this opulence, 
planned so many schemes to put Yudhishthira into difficulty. And at last, the battle of Kurukshetra was brought about. After the battle of Kurukshetra, Maharaj Yudhishthira was again able to rule his legitimate kingdom and he reinstated the principles of honor and respect for religion. That is the beauty of a kingdom ruled by a pious king like Maharaj Yudhishthira. Text 37 Please tell me whether the unconquerable Bhima who was like a cobra has released his long-cherished anger upon the sinners. The field of battle could not tolerate even the wonderful playing of his club when he stepped on the path. Purport Vidura knew the strength of Bhima. Whenever Bhima was on the battlefield, his steps on the path and the wonderful playing of his club were unbearable for the enemy. Powerful Bhima did not take steps against the sons of Dhritarashtra for a long time. Vidura's inquiry was whether he had yet released his anger, which was like that of a suffering cobra. When a cobra releases its venom after long cherished anger, its victim cannot survive. Text 38 Please tell me whether Arjuna, whose bow bears the name Gandiva, and who is always famous amongst the chariot warriors for vanquishing his enemies, is doing well. He, he once satisfied Lord Shiva by covering him with arrows when Shiva became an unidentified false hunter. Purport <clears throat> Lord Shiva tested Arjuna's strength by picking a quarrel with him over a hunted boar. He confronted Arjuna in the false dress of a hunter and Arjuna covered him with arrows until Lord Shiva was satisfied with Arjuna's fighting. He, he offered Arjuna the Pashupata weapon and blessed him. Here Vidura inquired about the great warrior's well-being. Text 39 Are the twin brothers who are, protected, who, are, who are protected by their brothers doing well? Just as the eye is always protected by the eyelid, the twins are protected by the sons of Prita who snatched back their rightful kingdom from the hands of their enemy Duryodhana. Just as Garuda snatched nectar from the mouth of Indra the thunderbolt carrier. Purport Indra, the king of heaven, carries a thunderbolt in his hand and is very strong. Yet Garuda, <clears throat> the carrier of Lord Vishnu, was able to snatch nectar from his mouth. Similar, Duryodhana was as strong as the king of heaven and still the sons of Prita, the Pandavas, were able to snatch away their kingdom from Duryodhana. Both Garuda and the Parthas are pet devotees of the Lord and thus it was possible for them to face such strong enemies. Vidura's inquiry was about the youngest brothers of the Pandavas, namely, namely Nukula and Sahadev. These twin brothers were sons of Madri, the stepmother, of the other Pandavas. But although they were stepbrothers, because Kunti took charge of them after the departure of Madri with her husband Maharaj Pandu, Nakula and Sadev were as good as the other three Pandavas, Yudhishthir, Bhima, and Arjuna. The five brothers are known in the world as regular brothers. The three elder brothers took care of the younger brothers just as the eyelid takes care of the eye. Vidura was anxious to know whether after winning back their own kingdom from the hands of Duryodhana, the younger brothers were still living happily under the care of the elder brothers. Text 40 
O my Lord, is Prita still living? She lived only for the sake of her fatherless children. Otherwise, it was impossible for her to live without King Pandu, who was the greatest commander and who alone conquered the four directions simply with the help of his bow. Purport A faithful wife cannot live without her lord, the husband, and therefore all widows used to voluntarily embrace the burning fire which consumed the dead husband. This system was very common in India because all the wives were chaste and faithful to their husbands. Later on, with the advent of the age of Kali, the wives gradually began to be less adherent to their husbands, and the voluntary embrace of the fire by the widows became a thing of the past. Very recently, the system was abolished since the voluntary system had become a forcible social custom. When Maharaj Pandu died, both his wives, namely Kunti and Madri, were prepared to embrace the fire. But Madri requested Kunti to live for the sake of the young children, the five Pandavas. This was agreed to by Kunti and the added request of Vyasadeva at the added request of Vyasadeva. In spite of her great bereavement, Kunti decided to live, not to enjoy life in the as absence of her husband, but only to give protection to the children. This incident is referred to here by Vidura because he knew all the facts about his sister-in-law, Kunti Devi. It is understood that Maharaj Pandu was a great warrior and that he alone, with the help of bow and arrow, could conquer the world's four directions. In the absence of such a husband, it was almost impossible for Kunti to live, to live on, even as a widow, but she had to do it for the sake of the five children. Hare Krishna. So it's up to 755. Uh, we'll stop our reading here and Start again tomorrow at text 41. Hare Krishna. We're just waiting for the reflections of the great sages here. Hare Krishna. First is from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Sudevi Dasi, she my dear God sister, Hare Krishna. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Bo. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Jai Gopakanya <coughs> Devi Dasi ki jai. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled devotees. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jai El Gorish to his divine grace and his sincere followers. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, by your mercy I am entering the circle of sages once again. Hari Krishna, Hari Bo. And from Jemma? Yes, Jemma. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Jai Prabhupada. Hari Bo. And from Bhakta Rupa? Yes, Bhakta Rupa. Thank you for reading this evening, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai. Quote, Constant thought of the Lord is the antiseptic method for keeping oneself free from the infectious contamination of the material qualities. Sri mm. the Prabhupada is the king of analogies. Nice pick. He makes philosophical concepts so clear by comparing them to everyday things. Even people like me can understand. Yes, he's the greatest poet ever. True. Hare Krishna. 
Om Shri Daitari Hari. Yes, Daitari Hari. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Nice to hear tonight that Akrura was naturally faultless due to his constant remembrance of the Lord. It serves as a good reminder about the importance of attentively and consistently doing high quality hearing and chanting. Yes, and praying. He was particularly known for his prayers. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We have Radhe Sham on our altar today from Vrindavan. Wonderful memories from near many years ago. These are the most beautiful forms of Radha and Krishna in the world. Yes, Bhakti Rupa. He says, we're going to Krishna Valley as a Yatra, and I've heard we should pray like a Krura before entering the Dham. Yes, please do. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I must admit it is delightful to be hearing about the Pandavas and the direct family members of Lord Krishna. Yes. Like the heroic Queen Kunti. Yes, all of them. I also was feeling like that when, when we were reading today. How nice it was to hear about all the Pandavas. Their adventures. What lives, huh? What full lives. Huh? Always protected by Krishna, no matter what. Sometimes when we have some difficulties, and everyone has difficulties in this material world, but we can get strength and solace from hearing about how the Pandavas passed through the difficulties they went through and without missing a beat in terms of their love and affection for Krishna and how Krishna protected them under any, circ any and all circumstances. And there were heavy circumstances they were under for many, many years. Yudhishthir was so honest, he, he never told a lie. And so when they cheated him in gambling, he just went to the forest. Along with his brothers and Kunti. All to sh teach the world what pure devotional service means and how meaningful it can actually be when we take full shelter of Krishna and the level of protection that Krishna gives his devotees is inconceivable Hare Krishna Yes Subarao Hare Bo Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada Jai glories to Sri the Prabhupada Thank you for daily reading of the glorious Sri the Prabhupada's books. Mm. Yes, Sri the Prabhupada's books are masterpieces. They're actually masterpieces. I was hearing Gopi Puranadana Prabhu the other day saying how, you know, Sri the Prabhupada was a scholar, there's no doubt about that, but he didn't consider himself a very great scholar as, compo as compared to the likes of his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, and you know, Jiva Goswami and Sanatana Goswami and Rupa with the rest of them. But he was, uh, his English was so poetic, you know, and his translations were so heart rending. And as we heard, someone said, I don't remember which, who it was. Maybe it was Bhakti Rupa or Daijai Hari that uh, 
Yeah, the touching. A poet, Gopi was saying that a poet can create a world. He can have the moon and the sun in the sky at the same time. You know? And uh, have millions of suns come up. You know, and these things are they're not they're not real, but they they portray the emotion and the event that they're describing in ways that make it uh, very wonderful. And it is very conducive, Krishna's pastimes are very conducive to, to this kind of poetic, poetic uh, translation and, and commentary. Yes, yeah, so, but po Pra Prabhupada is very special because it's poetic but at the same time simple as you were saying just now. Poetic, but at the same time simple and easy to understand. Anyone can understand. But they have to be honest and they have to be sincere. These are what we have to aspire for. Complete sincerity and honesty. Then we can understand Krishna when we hear the Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. Um, Jagamohan. Yes, Jagamohan. Hare Krishna. Dear Maharaj and dear devotees, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Yesterday we heard Prabhupada state that trying to see Krishna, trying to see Krishna is as valuable to a devotee as actually seeing him. Mm. Today Prabhupada said that even just thinking of Krishna is the antiseptic for our materially diseased condition. Yes. The power of devotional service is beyond my comprehension. I am so grateful for this association. Thank you once again for your service to His Divine Grace. All glories to the daily readings, all glories to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Jai, what a lovely reflection. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, more from Subarao. Yes, Subarao. He says, I was trying to reach you through the Facebook Messenger. I, You know, it, I don't know if it works on my device. I don't think it does. I haven't seen the message. It, you can tell me what it is and or send it again or something. I try. Bhakti Rupa. Yes, Bhakti Rupa. Prabhupada's books offer something for everyone. Absolutely. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. I noticed that there were many questions, one after another, being asked by, D by Vidura, and Maitreya did not interrupt him. Was this due to the circumstances, or was this a way of speaking in the Vedic times, like a form of politeness? Yes, it's etiquette. It's the etiquette. Had this happened nowadays, almost certainly he would have been interrupted. Well, we, we heard in the verse, in the verses and in the purports, how he was old enough to be his father. Vidura was older than Uddhava old enough to be his father. So the etiquette is to be very respectful so you don't interrupt you know, a, a senior when they're speaking. And therefore the whole Vedic culture was very peaceful and very ecstatic, very lovely in all ways. I was, I was hearing this morning Gopi, Gopi Paranadana Prabhu was talking about, no, Prabhupada was talking, I'm sorry, it was when I was talking first thing in the morning Prabhupada was describing how at one point uh, Dronacharya complained to Bhishma during the battle. I think that you have too much affection for the Pandavas and therefore you're not fighting with your full strength. And Bhishma, the great warrior and grandfather of all the other warriors, he became, he, he resented it. And he said, oh, you don't think I'm fighting? Well, tomorrow I will end the Pandavas. And he said, I have five arrows I've prepared for the purpose. 
And then Duryodhana, because he was such a rascal, he didn't trust him. So he said, could you just give me the arrows and I'll keep them safely with me. He said, all right, you can keep them. I'll get them in the morning. So then Krishna, of course, he knows everything. So he knew what happened. And he went to Arjuna and he said, listen, do you remember the time when you helped Duryodhana when he was being uh, wounded in a battlefield and he, and he gave you a benediction that, that he, he could come to you whatever, whenever he wanted something, a benediction? He said, now you take that benediction, you go there. And in, in the evenings after the battle, they would meet together like they were friends or relatives. It's, all, it's, it, it's inconceivable. But anyway, so Duridon, you know, greeted Arjuna very nicely. He said, so what, what can I do for you? Do you want the kingdom without the fight? What, do you, what can I do? You can have everything if you want. He said, no, I don't want anything like that. I want, I want those five arrows. You remember the, the vow you, you, you made? to give me a benediction when I want it. Well, I want those five arrows, please. And Duryodhana gave them immediately. This was the Vedic culture. Beyond our conception. The, the codes of contact and the etiquettes and the degree of, you know, sophistication and subtlety of, of everything in the Vedic culture was very elevated. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari says, peaceful, ecstatic, and lovely. That sounds wonderful. Hare Krishna. And from Gemma. Yes, Gemma. Sri the Prabhupada Ji was just so humble, but his greatness really shines through. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely true. He was so great that he would meet big people like, you know, politicians, leaders, whoever he was with. And they took, used to take pictures of him and he would be there looking so regal and kingly, stately and saintly. And it was like the other person was greeting, you know, was being greeted by him rather than him greeting Prabhupada. And his movements were just like poetry in motion. So aristocratic. Prabhupada was a person in which everything was in place. There was nothing out of place. <laughs> Jai Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari said so much respect they had for each other. Yes. This is spiritual culture, spiritual life. And this is from Toon. Tarun. Toon. T O O N. Oh, Toon. Right, I remember seeing his name. Yes, yes. He says, Hare Krishna, thank you very much for reading. Some comparison struck me. The Vedas as reservoir of sacrificial purposes. Mm. Krishna as the purposes of the Vedas incarnated. Krishna as the soul of the self. Mm. Yes, these are very intimate uh, glorifications of Krishna. And only devotees of Krishna can understand them and appreciate them <coughs> and become really happy when we hear them. From Rati Mandar. Yes, Rati. And I agree with you on what you said about Sri Sri Radha Shyam Sundar. Please bless me that I may realize it. <laughs> I think you took initiation from him, didn't you? I think so. 
At least you were there. For sure. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol Samaveda Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai. See you tomorrow night, same time, same place, same topic as the relationship between uh, Vidura and Uddhava and eventually Maitreya in Vidura unfold with all the details of spiritual realization. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.